Hi guys, Mr. Bart here. Um, we are going to go over chapter 10 sections one and two right now. Uh, chapter 10, long section or long chapter. It's got five sections. Um, it's got one of the things, one of my favorite things to teach though, the crusades. So I'm going to go through our PowerPoint, uh, follow along and you can use this for the packet that is already up on our Google Classroom, okay? So I'm gonna split my screen and take us to our PowerPoint, and I hope you enjoy. Now remember, I'm only doing uh, sections one and two, and later this week, we will do three, four, and five, okay? So while we get this loaded up, here we go. Chapter 10, section one. Um, we're gonna talk about popes and kings, okay? Um, now, the Pope is the leader of the Catholic Church, and um, a lot of the kings got power because the Pope allowed them to. Now, your EQ would have been, how would you characterize the influence of popes and kings on society in the Middle Ages, okay? So, here's the map of uh, Europe. Um, at this point, the Holy Roman Empire uh, becomes a thing, and... You can see at the bottom right-hand corner that everything in purple is Christian lands, everything in yellow is Muslim lands, and that's going to become important um, starting in the next section, which we'll get to, okay? So what powers do the Pope have? They're head of the Christian church, like I said. Most Europeans are um, were Christian and still are at this time, um, and people believe that the Pope had the power to excommunicate people. Now, what does that mean? It means the power to send someone to hell. They believe that that was a thing, Okay. Um, and of course, the Pope's got some political power. Uh, the kings look to them for guidance a lot of the times. Okay, power of the kings. Kings had great power, England, France, and the Holy Roman Empire. Usually they inherited their thrones from their fathers. Um, and then they maintained their alliances, or they maintained power through alliances and warfare. Okay, and political power, you can send whoever you want to gel. Now, the Holy Roman Empire once was ruled by Charlemagne. And in the 900s, another emperor took the throne, Pope's approval. Um, today, we don't, the Pope doesn't say who gets to become our president or really head of any government. Uh, most people get to vote for that now. So that is something that has changed. Uh, emperors were elected by nobles usually. All right, so this chart is something we would have done when we were in class. Um, the next slide is the answer to this one. Okay, so fight for power. What did that look like? Okay, well, there was a pope named Leo, and he wanted power over all of the bishops in the lands. Okay, bishops are high-ranking members of the Catholic Church. Uh, the bishop of Constantinople refused to give Leo power, so Leo excommunicated him, which, of course, means send him to jail or send him to hell. He has the power to do that. Uh, so Bishop of Constantinople started his own church, and we, they're called the Eastern Orthodox. And people in the East who agreed with the bishop became Eastern Orthodox, while Christians in the West became known as Catholic, okay? And here's another flow chart. Again, answers are on the next page. So, Emperor Henry IV versus Pope Gregory VII. There you go, you got a couple uh, paintings of them. Um, pope, or Emperor Henry chose a bishop that the Pope did not like, and Henry refused to move the bishop. So, Henry was excommunicated by the Pope, for not acknowledging the Pope's authority. This leads to the Compromise of 1122. Pope and church had power, king had political power. Fighting continues. Okay, now this is where we get to chapter uh, 10, section two, the Crusades. And so what the Crusades were was a, uh, a series of military campaigns where um, European Christians, um, want to retake the Holy Land from Muslim empires. And so what, what is the Holy Land? It's Jerusalem. It's an important part of Christianity. It's where Jesus preached, where Jesus lived, where, in, where Jesus end, ends up dying. Um, so how did these get started? And we're going to really take a look at the legacy of this. Here's a movie trailer um, from a movie called Kingdom of Heaven that came out. Uh, I think in 2005, it's about the Crusades. It's awesome. There's a clip of it coming up in one of your slides. The next slide is a uh, video called from Crash Course, which we've used in our class before. And you can take a look at what he has to say about the Crusades. So it's a really simple 10 minute thing about the Crusades, why they happen and their impact. All right. So the Holy Land, where is it? Okay. Well, it's right here. 
as you can see, um, everything in green was the Jewish state, everything in this yellow orange color was the Arab state, and then the district of Jerusalem is this purple right here, okay? Um, a lot of people call it Palestine. Uh, today we call it Israel. Now, oops, sorry. Now, Muslims controlled Palestine or the Holy Land. Christians wanted it, and Christians no longer felt safe traveling to the Holy Land because a lot of the surrounding areas became um, uh, overrun with Muslim armies. And Muslim armies were threatening to attack the Byzantine Empire, okay, which, as we know, is the Eastern Roman Empire from our previous lessons. The Pope at the time, his name is Pope Urban, called on all Christians to unite and fight. Uh, and basically what he promises, if you go and fight in the Crusades, you will be granted your spot in heaven. Now, if you have that assurance, because people really did believe that the popes had the power to send people to hell. If, you, if the Pope says, if you go to the Holy Land and you fight, you're going to be guaranteed an entrance into heaven. You can justify any action that you possibly want to. Okay. Now, um, many Christians or many crusaders wanted to go for adventure, treasure, and of course, to honor God. All right. Uh, first crusade, so you can see a map of where they go and how they get there. And let's talk a little bit about the details of it, okay? I have another map for you to take a look at that has a couple of the other crusades on there. And a, here you have another battle map, of course. And now let's talk about some of the or some of the things that happened. So 1096, 5,000 untrained, unprepared peasants go. They thought they can win riches and win glory. And if you're a peasant, you don't really have any money. Okay, so they thought this idea that if they go, not only will they be granted salvation, but they will also be paid. Um, crusaders were killed by Muslims before they even got to the Holy Land. Okay, three years later, nobles and knights were for crusaders. Um, and then, of course, the Crusaders actually do win. They do take the city of Jerusalem. Oh. And then here's something we would have filled in in class if we were together, okay? Um, you have a couple more Crusade or more maps of the Crusades going. So now we're going to talk about the Second and Third Crusade. Again, this is something that we would have filled out in class. So Second Crusade. 1147, French and Germans went to fight. Muslims end up winning the Second Crusade, okay? You have Emperor Conrad of Germany, uh, Germany and King Louis of France involved. Um, this is that part of this movie, Kingdom of Heaven. This is the final battle scene um, where Jerusalem ends up falling, okay? And we're going to talk about who they surrendered to in just a second. The Third Crusade is a guy named Richard... Um, uh, or King Richard of England. They call him Richard Lionheart. You have the King Philip of France now and Emperor Frederick of Germany. Um, and they are going to inspire people to go on a third crusade to reclaim the Holy Land. Muslims end up winning again. The Christians don't get Jerusalem back, by the way. Okay, and the, all the crusades. There's over 10 crusades and the only one where the Christians really end up winning Jerusalem is the first one and they lose it in the second crusade. Okay. Third Crusade, Richard the Lionheart versus uh, Saladin. And um, Saladin is one of the most revered characters in military history. He's known for being a kind, very intelligent fighter. Okay. Um, more map of, okay. Fourth Crusade, again, we would have done this in class. And so what happens in the, third, the Fourth Crusade? 1201, Roman Catholic Crusaders get greedy. Uh, Roman Catholic Crusaders looted the Eastern Orthodox city of Constantinople. So you have Christians attacking a Christian empire. I mean, it, it, you might as well just cancel the Crusades right there. After this, there's some small Crusades that get taken. Um, none of them are successful, okay? They never make it to the Holy Land. All right, so here's the important thing, okay? The effects of the Crusades. Trade between Europe and Asia grows. All right, and ideas are shared between Muslims and Christians. Kings become more powerful because when you have a Pope, Pope Urban, who tells people they're going to get access to um, heaven, be forgiven of their sins if they go fight, and then the Crusades don't really give Christians what they want, you're going to see the power of the church start to decline, power of government start to increase, okay? And that is where we will actually stop 
for chapter 10, sections one and sections two. Uh, in a couple of days, I'll make one for this section, section three. And then of course, we still have the other ones to finish. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was quick. And if you have any questions, don't feel free to reach out. Okay. Talk to you guys soon.